How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Vampirus Carmilla number four. This is from September 2021. Now for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with uh, what exactly this magazine is, this is a black and white anthology horror magazine. I believe we have uh, six sh uh, short stories in here with a heavy focus on the classic monsters, but that being said, not exclusively, and you do get a good variety. Now, for those of you guys who are familiar with The Creeps, uh, this is the same people that made The Creeps made this, so it's the sister magazine, and it's very similar, but you get a different host. You get a Vampirus Carmilla telling the scary story to all the monsters inside Dracula's old castle. And before we open up, let's take a look at the uh, cover for this issue. We get the nice uh, purple for the title, and then we get the archer with the, the lady beside him, and this is from the story Lips of the Succubus, see page 7. And you get the uh, the shield on the ground, too, as well. Uh, pretty fun cover. I do like original paintings for the covers. Those are always uh, pretty nice. And let's go ahead and open up. Um, on the other side of the cover, we have Carmela's Scary Tales, The Sirens. And I um, have to apologize for the censorship, but YouTube, we all know, is very, very strict. Um, but anyway... Uh, the Sirens, it talks about how they lure ships into the rocks, and if the ships pass by, the Sirens will wind up dying. But it also says that according to some legends, Sirens can shapeshift and walk around on land, so again, tying it back to the real world, be careful of that new lady you meet. So, um... Pretty cool to see a, a quite classic, iconic monster there, uh, Sirens. Uh, anyway, the very first page, we have the, uh, the credits and the contents for this issue. So if you want to see who all made this, you can uh, pause the video there and read through all the, uh, all the credits for this issues. And then the, uh, the contents, we also have the uh, teaser images, so you get an idea what the stories are about. The letters page, the uh, Vampirus Carmilla Ketchup page, Lips of the Succubus, the first full story, Delivered, Sealed, and Confined, uh, Ghost Brides, Outside the Box, Little Lady, and That Time of the Month. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six full stories and a picture for each one. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and talk a bit about the, uh, the stories in this issue. Uh, that being said, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a, a basic idea as to what each story is about, uh, but I won't be covering the ends and I by no means will uh, do the twist. Um, well, actually, before the stories, a uh, quick look at the letters page there. You can uh, see someone bought uh, two copies of number one and is displaying that, uh, having their twins hold one of each, you know, and... Uh, there's Carmela with the uh, the letter there. Um, anyway, flipping right along into the first story, uh, well, the first story, the uh, Carmela in the castle segment. We always get one page with Carmela there, uh, and it appears that the uh, the werewolf has fleas this time around. I also get a little picture of the fly in the background, and. Carmela has to brush the werewolf, and then we settle into reading the scary stories. And the first one, Lips of the Succubus, and I do love how the whore host always dress for the occasion, you know, the, the Viking hat. But this is a, a fun fantasy story. We open up with this warlord guy, and they're about to push a big boulder on this, uh, on this dragon and kill it. But how did we get here, and why is this all happening? Well, we go back to the past, and we find that the uh, the warlords have returned from their raid, but an evil spirit, the uh, the succubus, has followed them back to their village, and they can't quite figure out how to kill it. So they go to an old witch, who offers up some advice and sends them out on a quest. 
Fantasy stories are pretty fun. They're a cool way to shake things up, and this is, you know, pretty good standard, you know, uh, fantasy fair with a, a few new things uh, thrown into it, you know, and I'm not the biggest fantasy guy, but it is interesting to every now and then, uh, you know, take horror and combine it with another genre there, so a fun way to shake things up, and it seems like in The Creeps and in Carmelo you tend to get, it, you know, one, sometimes two, an issue that really uh, shake things up. And after that, the uh, Delivered, Sealed, and Confined story, you get a female vampire escaping the crowd trying to kill her. We see her turn into mist, and she goes in these little holes in her, uh, in her grave to uh, hide from the men. They, of course, dig her up and stake her, and she turns into a skeleton. Now, a hundred years after her uh, death there, Lightning strikes the grave and bursts it open right when this guy is walking by. And the guy, of course, makes the, the mistake of pulling out the stake. The female vampire comes back, turns him into her servant, and goes about and goes about uh, re-establishing her, uh, her little business there, and first order of business is replacing that old coffin with this new cool brass one. This is one of those stories um, that, you know, it's all about building up and getting to one thing, you know, in her case, uh, re-establishing her vampire, uh, you know, uh, empire there, but it's all one of those stories that hinges on that that one thing in the background, and you have to kind of guess, you know, what's uh, what's going to be that thing, that twist at the end, you know. And of course, obviously, won't spoil that for you guys. Um, up next, Ghost Brides. Uh, you get a funeral there. A young lady died before her time, and two men come and dig up the grave. They take the grave put it in the back of the van and drive it down to uh, this other guy's grave and bury the two of them together. And if you're wondering why they do all this, they take a minute to explain a little bit of uh, Asian folklore, the, uh, the ghost wedding, where if two people died before they're wedded, they can... Uh, be buried together and spend the afterlife together, but of course uh, they don't always find a willing person and sometimes have to resort resort to uh, to grave robbing there. And of course, when uh, this modern case of the ghost wedding is uncovered, we get a little bit of a supernatural shenanigans and revenge, you know. So a pretty uh, fun story there. I do love you know hearing about folklore from other countries. So a fun, uh, a fun twist there. Uh, up next, outside the box, and for whatever reason, uh, they. Uh, I think this is in the third person, right? Um, it's two walking home from a job. You, Debbie Nelson. So every now and then they they do. Uh, not third person, second person stories, and this is one of them where they're talking to you like you're the main character. Uh, but this girl sees the, the police, and there is a dead body there. The guy was uh, killed and partially eaten, and there's a whole series of murders, and she, on her way out, bumps into this guy, a weird little man that's uh, known around town for always carrying this box, and the rumor is that he's very, very rich, but he doesn't trust uh, the banks, so he keeps all his money in that box, and she's kind of a, a low-life character, so she plots to, uh, to take the box away from him. And you get the first half of the story, a uh, really cool grungy New York horror style story. There is actually a whole bunch of, you know, grungy New York stories like Chud, and there's another one I can think of that I don't want to, you know, get, might give away too much of the ending. But um, you get the first half a grungy New York style story. Then he, uh, she goes back to his place, and it's a dilapidated old mansion story. So a really cool way to uh, combine those two genres and, you know, the whole story building up to 
finally getting that box away from him. Up next, a little lady, a story about a microscopic universe, and we get a fun uh, miniature version of Carmella there sitting on top of the skull there, and this guy and his wife, um, they're in his lab, and he's developed an even better microscope, and he can see into the small miniature world, and he sees this horrifying monster there. So he's seeing a whole world of super, super small things that no one else has seen before. Now, he's examining this whole new world, and he sees something, uh, something very strange, and that is a earth pig, just a regular old pig running around the world. And he's like, okay, that's weird. What's up with that? And he looks closer and he sees a beautiful woman inside the miniature world as well who can talk to him with telepathy. So uh, all of a sudden he sees this woman and he starts to become obsessed with the miniature world, you know? And I do find it's a really cool, you know, sort of allegory, you know? Uh, they talk about people who get obsessed or, you know, married to their work, you know? And in this case, uh, the relationship between him and his wife is stressed by their work, but the work also happens to literally be a, a beautiful woman there. And there is a, a fun thematic tie back to this element at the very end as well, but I really did love seeing this miniature world and all the weird characters in it. I really did like this story. It's probably my uh, my favorite uh, one out of the bunch this this round, and I do like this really cool, sharp, uh, angular art style. If they ever do a, a comic adaptation of John Carpenter's The Thing, because these can get like really pointy and stuff, I would love to see this artist take it on. Uh, so a cool angular art style. It's really uh, really cool and different. And then after that we uh, get a few ads and it's on to our last story. I don't normally talk about the ads too much but this one for creepy classics, hard to find horror DVDs. Man, all these titles here. It's a, a bunch of uh, weird and crazy stuff, you know. Uh, Tarzan and the de and the She Devil in a bunch of uh, crazy, you know, Hammer classics and stuff. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a horror movie geek, and I did spend a while reading through all those titles. That was uh, that was pretty fun. Uh, but anyway, moving on to the last story. Uh, again, I, I always say this, it seems, but I can't believe we got to the end already. Um, but the story that time of the month and we get uh, Carmela dressed up like a boxer with uh, the magazine's publisher as her uh, as the logo there and we see that there's this boxer lady who's passionate for her sport but keeps having to tap out because she's not the best and she keeps she keeps getting beat up and she's walking home one day when she's attacked by a werewolf and yeah that whole pun you know that time of the month actually referring to the full moon um we saw this pun before in uh, dog soldiers anyway um she gets bit by the werewolf and they're like oh you're lucky you survived that dog attack but she notices now she feels a lot stronger than she did and you know not the best thing ever to be a werewolf, but it does help out your career in wrestling. So, a fun uh, twist on that story, and I have to say, I can't really think of too many horror stories about uh, boxing slash wrestling. I'm not 100% sure on the technical terms. I guess it's mixed martial arts. Uh, professional fighting, let's just say, because I'm, <laughs> I'm not a sports guy. But it's cool to see a sports horror story as well. Again, uh, changing things up. And I think out of these stories, those last three were my favorite. You know, the, the box one with the cool cartoony art style, the, uh, the miniature world one, and then the uh, werewolves boxing. Yeah, those last three really, uh, really did hit, a, hit it out pretty well. Um, so anyway... Vampires Carmella, again, another really good and really fun issue. If you guys are reading The Creeps, I definitely recommend picking up Carmella as well. And if you guys like uh, classically styled black and white horror comics, you know, if you like anthology stuff, I definitely recommend picking this up. Altogether, a really solid issue, and I really did enjoy those uh, those last three in particular. Some really fun ideas, but all the stories are pretty good. But, um... 
that, that was a, a really fun issue. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to the next one. I believe they alternate where it's uh, one month Creeps and then one mo month Carmilla. So I think the next Creeps is uh, the next one I'll be picking up. So I uh, can't wait for that. Definitely be uh, picking that up and reading it. Anyway, uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, uh, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Creeps and Carmilla playlist, so if you want to see more reviews for this type of stuff, I actually have all the Carmillas uh, reviewed, so one through three I have in that playlist as well. But if you want to see more, you can click there and see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.